Hey guys, what is going on? It's Don here from Nova Spare Tech and welcome back to the channel. And today I got a super exciting project to show you guys, which is something called Quick MU. And it's like a one-stop shop to download, deploy, and launch VMs on your Linux machine. So let's get started. And I do have a couple of videos, which I'll leave a link on the top left, where I actually interact by using Vert Manager to run VMs. And this is a similar product, you could say. It does use QEMU as the back end, but in the front end, it completely changed with helping you download all the VMs, configuring it, deploying it, and being able to use in a couple of clicks. And I'm talking about any type of VM. It could do Mac OS, Windows, Linux. It does have a lot of selection, but not all, obviously. Jumping into my desktop, we have the GitHub project, and I'll leave all the links down in the description below. And if you scroll down, he is actually using Splice as a video manager, which is great because it's actually very fast compared to VNC, like what we're used to on using the Vert Manager. But scrolling down here, it is the original product or the original software called QuickMU is a command line based software. And somebody created a GUI for it, which makes this 10 times better. Like using the GUI makes complete sense. So I'll, to install this, all we have to do is just download and install, actually add the repository or the PPA to the terminal. So I just copy that and paste it into my terminal right there. And hit enter for that. It's gonna add everything and update. And then all you have to do is sudo apt install quick mu. It's gonna go through the process of installing that, but we're not done yet. Like I said, we wanna use the GUI interface, which makes a huge difference in running this guy. Obviously, if you're just planning to run regular VMs without the GUI, that's fine as well, but game changer on using the GUI. Hit enter on that. After I pasted that, and then I'm just gonna install quick GUI. So here, we're gonna do sudo app install quick GUI. And that is it. If you wanna read through the instructions, they do have everything that you need to use the command line interface for, which most of the time the GUI will handle. But if you want to change specific configurations for that model or that uh, VM, you can do it through command line. And like I said, it's Mac OS compatible. You could install Windows and nothing, you don't require to have your own ISO. This will actually download everything for you. So now that everything is installed, I am gonna jump over to Quick. GUI, so that's the same logo as before. And in here, there is a light mode and a dark mode. This actually reminds me of the Raspberry Pi uh, imager, but yeah, you could go into use dark mode or light mode, whatever you want. Now, first thing you wanna do is create a VM. Creating a VM allows you to download the VM itself and all the configurations it needs. So look what they have, Android x86, uh, elementary OS, Scroll down a little bit, Kali Linux. Um, let me see, Mac OS, uh, Sol Solus, Ubuntu, Windows, Zorin OS. There's, there's so many different types of operating systems that you could download from here. But if you wanted to check it out, like if I was to go into Mac OS, I select the version. So High Sierra, Catalina, whatever I want to use, I could select that and hit download. And I'll have all the images, all the configurations in place to run Mac OS Catalina. So in my case, we're not gonna be testing that yet. I'm gonna jump into elementary OS. We're gonna download version 6.0 because that's the latest version they have. And I'm gonna hit download. Now, I already pre-downloaded this. That's why it says, boom, download finish because I didn't want you to sit through that. But next step we need to do, once you're done, hit the dismiss, close out of that, go back to the main menu. Whoop, not main menu. We are in the main menu. Go into manage existing machines. And it is very finicky on this. Look, if I highlight the text, it doesn't click on anything, but you have to move slightly above that and then your arrow would change, you see that? It's one of those little things that they have to fix on the GUI, I think. And then next we have to do is just run the VM. Also, remember to change the folder. So when you go into manager, remember to change the folder from home.don to whatever folder you want. And I created a folder called VM because it's gonna pollute everything in your home directory if you don't change this. So once you're done with everything, hit play, and there we have it, our splice controller. 
Now, from here, you would need to set up the rest of your operating system, but everything is in place. So basically, uh, the ISO is downloaded, the hard drive is created, um, everything you need is basically working as soon as you download that little uh, elementary OS 6.0. So as you can see, it's still a black screen because it's booting into it, but uh, give it a second, it should load into the actual operating system and I could go forth in installing the rest of the system. So while that is running in the background, you could always go over here and download your next operating system if elementary was not what you wanted. So I'm gonna go in here and download, say, Mac OS, select Sierra. This will actually download the installer, but not the entire operating system, which is pretty cool. So it saves you space on downloading, but to download the entire operating system, it takes like two hours to install it because there's so much to, that needs to be downloaded. So I'm gonna let this go while this is downloading. I'm just gonna run this. And on my laptop, when I was testing this out on, I was able to run Big Sur. So even though Catalina is recommended through their website, they're saying like you should just install Catalina image, you can still install Big Sur. So now that it's done, I'm gonna dismiss that and I'm gonna leave elementary running. Uh, I'm just gonna pop over here and start a second session. So we're gonna have Mac OS and I'm gonna enable that. And now we have two VMs working. Now this is gonna install Mac OS. Again, I am not going to go through the whole procedure of installing all this stuff. I'm just showing you that this software could get everything working with just a click. If you needed a Windows VM real quick, you didn't want to download the ISO, you don't want to find where Windows 10 or Windows 11 is, you could just use this software. It'll download everything for you, configure everything, and get everything up and running in a matter of a couple of clicks. You can always go into their website to look up the quick settings in their config files to see what you need to do to configure the size, CPU count, memory size, all that other stuff. But for default, it should have enough to get it going. And here we go, the Mac OS installer. Obviously you could resize the window and everything and make it full screen, but there are a couple of menus up here that you could use. Uh, you could view in full screen like we said before. You could disable the toolbar status bar if you don't want to. Uh, USB redirection. I don't think it works on some operating systems, but it should work in most. Read the GitHub. In the options, you have all these other settings that you could uh, put on. But one of the things is resize guests to match window size. That seemed to only work on Linux. So if you got any Linux uh, VMs, works perfectly fine. Uh, on Windows, it doesn't seem to do it. It just um, scales it instead. So uh, that's one thing about it. You could also change this. If you are running into slight lagging issues, Splice has all these different com image compressions that you could use. So if you got a high, uh, just leave it on auto, but if you got a higher CPU, you could just um, use, a, I think LZ4 was the highest. And then if you turn it off, it's just direct. You don't have to compress anything. So it saves on bandwidth. I mean, not bandwidth, CPU processes. Then you can change this for different codecs. I use MJPEG, it's cleaner, but this one's probably faster, H.264. Anyway, uh, that is it for me, guys. I really enjoyed using this program, especially for my laptop setting. And if I needed to spin something up really quick, just to test something, or if I needed a Windows machine, I could just click on it, download, and install Windows right away. It also has some options for pass-through because QEMU supports it, so you're able to do it. It's just not through the GUI interface itself. Check their uh, discussion board or the issue boards. They have some stuff about pass-through graphic cards and stuff like that. So if you want to use pass-through and stuff, they have it on the issue boards. Anyway, if you have any questions about this, hit me down in the comments below. If you guys are new to this channel, consider subscribing and hitting that bell notification icon so you know when the next video is gonna be out. And as I say, my nerd cave, hack till it hurts.